so one of the main um, cause of uh, error in uh, spectroscopy calculations with DFT and TDDFT is uh, the uh, monoconfigural um, approach used in DFT and for spin states it, it can be tricky let's take for example a charge transfer so for example here we have a TTF with um, an acceptor part a, a ligand that is a, a triazine and, and when we do the low-lying energy charge transfer, the first band, the electron, one electron of the TTF goes to the triazine. For a, a more um, a large system, the electron, excited electron, is uh, farther and farther away from the hole. That means that in the hole, hole you have one electron that are remaining and in the excited state there is one electron that are uh, that is unpaired you have a de-radical uh, excited states when you have charge separations DFT uh, would uh, officially do not handle well this case that is why uh, we have this uh, lambda tother that tells you that under 30% beware your charge separation is high and DFT could say uh, could, could not be uh, reliable so to explain this a little bit more slowly I will use the helium excites, excited state so in the helium atom okay so uh, to simplify I, ju I use only one atom and I consider just electrons that are separated in two orbitals you have the ground state is an alpha spin in, uh, in the 1s and a beta spin in the 1s but you have an excitation, you are in a first excited state. What we can write is it could be a triplet, either this way or this way. That means that here the alpha electron changes the spin when he goes up in energy also. And you can write two um, kind of uh, uh, excit excited configuration with alpha and the beta that goes up or the alpha goes up okay so here if, if we write those excited states those are spin configuration that means that you have uh, 1s and 2s this is the space uh, wave function so for this electron he is in the 1s for this electron he is in a 2s and you can multiply with a spin wave uh, function and that describes the spin for air we say that when the uh, arrow is up it's an alpha spin and when the arrow, arrow is down it's a beta spin how do we write the wave function of this configuration how do we write the wave function of all these two electrons not just one of them uh, one of them but for all the wave functions that describe this configuration how do we write this uh, wave function Someone recall this? Uh, with a slatter determinant. And why? And, and why a determinant? Uh, I, I don't really know. A slatter determinant uh, is used to represent every orbital uh, 
on the atom. Okay, so he, he just kept the information that is uh, to describe the space function, we use the Slater determinant. Indeed, when you don't remember this, you try to um, propose the archery product. However, the archery product is the simple produce of, for example, you say first electron is in a 1s and second electron is in a 2s. So we have a 1s for 1 and a 2s for 2 and we know that uh, in our case both spin are alpha so we have alpha of 1, alpha of 2. However, this is not correct because we have the poly principles principles that tells you that if you exchange two electrons your wave function should change of sign and and if you do uh, if you exchange here one and two you, you don't have uh, here the uh, the other you don't change change of sign if you do 1s r2 and 2s r1 it is not the uh, minus of the first it's another wave function. So uh, that's why Slater say, okay, if we use a determinant approach, that means that mathematically it's a, a determinant, that it's a cross product. Uh, let's say, is if I don't know if you remember what is a determinant. Um, Okay, so if, if we consider here a, a determinant with two terms, so let's say we have A, B, and A is the uh, wave function for uh, the first atomic orbital, B the wave function of the second atomic orbital, and we can put, for example, the first electron in A and B, and the second in A and B, and the final product is a D minus C B. So you have something that is a little bit more complex. It's we write uh, electron one is either in one S, so electron two is in two S, or electron two is in one S and electron one is in two S. And and we have a, a, a linear combination of the two possibility. And this is a determinant, a Slater determinant, and this form is correct uh, and, and, and respects the Pauli principle. So to do a, a determinant, what we do is that we take uh, each uh, config uh, electron configuration, for example here, it will be um, uh, 1s alpha, uh, beta, or and 2s beta, uh, 2s alpha. So we will have something that is uh, 1s of 1, beta of 1, multiply by 2s of 2, uh, alpha of 2, minus 2s of 1, alpha of 1, multiply by 1s of 2, beta of 2. So with the uh, produce, uh, with the determinant, we have all the uh, possibilities that are all these electrons are either one or two. And uh, since we do a minus, the linear combination with the minus, we change of sign each time that we exchange two electrons. In the termi determinant, in math, a determinant, you can, if you change two colons or two lines, it will change the determinant sign, so it respects the Pauli principle. Okay, uh, what is great with the uh, Slater determinant is that if you have two electrons in the same spin orbital, that means that you have two columns that are equal, or two lines, 
and in this case the determinant is zero so the wave function is not possible okay um, wait okay so here if we consider those two here that means that for example here we have two alpha two beta but here if we have alpha and beta we have some things that are problematic because if we take the one s in one okay and it's an alpha two s for the second electron and is in beta the other possibility is that when the one s alpha is for the electron 2 and the 2s beta is for electron 1 and when you do that you cannot factorize you cannot separate and um, spin and space part here you cannot uh, for example you have 1s r1 you don't have this one here you do have an alpha sigma 1 alpha sigma 2 you cannot factorize when we've done the first case with alpha we had alpha for one alpha for two and alpha for two alpha for one so here we could factorize this term to separate it from the space part and we have the spin part that is alpha one alpha two and you, we have uh, the uh, space part that was the rest and there is only space part for the, f the last case it will be the same since we will be able to factorize with beta 1, beta 2 it will be either beta 1 multiplied by beta 2 or beta 2 multiplied by beta 1 so here we have also a pure spin state that is fully beta, beta beta but when you have such alpha 1 beta 2 alpha 2 beta 1 how do you do and you cannot factorize with the uh, space part because it's c1 r1 c2s r2 minus c1 r2 2s r1 okay <clears throat> so here that means that those two spin states are not correct those two configurations are not correct so when you write this excitation here when you write something like that or something like that you write a wave function that does not exist so bear with me when you have two things here that are not correct it's just that this wave function is not uh, fully correct and what we will do is that we will combine those two we will do this one plus this one and this one minus this one so we will produce a linear combination of two open shell Slater determinants that gives So we have uh, so this one the first approach. One S R one, two S R two, and we have alpha beta one two, alpha beta two one, and we will do minus and plus the other combination that was uh, beta one alpha two, beta two alpha one, and here we have alpha one beta two they are common here and alpha 2 beta 1 that are common here so we can factorize those two and factorize those two if we do that we see that here we have 1s r1 2s r2 minus 1s r2 2s r1 and if you uh, look at the other we will have also 1s r1 2s r2 minus 1s r2 2s r1 so you produce uh, a 
more complex or not it's not complex it's a more complicated uh, re writing but that are correct now we have 1sr1 2sr2 minus 1sr2 2sr1 alpha 1 beta 2 minus uh, plus beta uh, beta 2 alpha 1 or the other possibilities that here we have plus and here minus when we put this in uh, the table we can see that this one was a pure spin state alpha alpha this one also beta beta when we look at the wave function we see 1sr1 2sr2 minus 1sr2 2sr1 and here the same 1sr1 2sr2 1sr2 2sr1 and in our new wave functions that are neither this one nor this one we have a combination of the two we have one solution that is 1sr1 2sr2 minus 1sr2 2sr1 with this spin state that is a mixing of the two open shell and we have finally this combination that this space part that is different from the other okay with an another spin state when we do the Schrodinger equation the energy depends on the space part so the energy here depends on this part that means that here we have this energy this energy and this energy that are the same we have three times the same energy and this is important because when we have a triplet we have indeed three triplet states so when we calculate and we say that the spin multiplicity of a triplet state is three y usually you can tell me that either we have all electrons in alpha all electrons in beta and the third one the I, I'm, I'm not sure that you have um, either uh, thought about it or someone show you but the third triplet state is, an, is a mixing of two states with an s equal to zero so when you have a triplet state you have a s1 plus one half plus one half you have the s minus one minus one half minus one half and you have a mixing of uh, two open shell states so wh when you write this in part you are right, writing something that is also a triplet state or at least it has a, uh, uh, the triplet state is a combination of those two and the, those are not pure singlet states you need to do a combination of the two to obtain either the new singlet state or the triplet state so what is new here for you is that when you do the first excited state of the helium and you write the electrons it seems easy but two of them are incorrect you need to 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 use two configurations to find your first singlet state and to find the uh, triplet state with an ms of zero so those are pure states and with just one configuration you can calculate them those are bis configuration states however dft is a mono configuration method okay so here we have a problem just let me finish and I will show you what are the energies of the two so uh, it's an, um, a little bit of more of mathematics 
and we do this time the hydrogen uh, uh, Schrodinger equation with our wave, wave function the spin does not contribute to the energy we have only the space part so here it is written more uh, easily it's just to emphasize some uh, integrals so here I don't know if you remember but when you have 1s 2s 1s 2s you have a columbic integral that we not g j and when we, we have uh, 2s 1s 1s 2s we have an exchange integral that we note k and when we do the difference between the singlet and the triplet we have an, a singlet triplet energy difference that depends on a Coulombic integral and an exchange integral so usually uh, um, today I go fast because uh, those kind of lines are interesting only if we took some time to write them tranquilly and we can see each other okay what I want to uh, show you is that when you consider the excited state the ground states the Coulombic interaction is responsible for the main uh, change in energy between the two excited states and the exchange interaction is responsible of the singlet triplet uh, energy difference and it's usually in favor of the triplet state that is why f mathematically uh, you should find a triplet state that is lower in energy in the uh, compared to the singlet if those two states are electronically identical if they represent the same kind of uh, uh, electronic state so uh, the triplet state T1 is lower in energy of uh, S1 if S1 and T1 are electronically identical if not it's not the case it's just that what we, what you can say is that the triplet state is lower in energy to the same identical electronic states uh, that correspond as a singlet so if T1 correspond to S2 T1 is lower in energy than S2 and um, for some cases maybe you you cannot write correctly uh, well, it depends but you should write always a triplet state that correspond to your singlet it's just that what can happen is a spin contamination so to be brief when we do a charge separation state so when we take an electron and it goes somewhere else it can be an uh, it's another space um, uh, space function we have technically in a d radical state we have three triplets with the same energy and one singlet the triplet state will be lower in energy and uh, than the singlet however the triplet state means a change in spin okay and if you want to compute the singlet states that correspond to this charge transfer you should need two configuration and and so in principle when you do DFT you should not have a correct answer for this kind of state this is why uh, when we have a lambda of tother that is under 0 0.3 you should have a bad answer but not always because we have spin contamination that means that in reality when we calculate this part or this part what we do is we have a mixing of the singlet and triplet and we do some error and you are not 50-50 you have a spin contamination that tells you uh, that you are not fully in a, a singlet state but 
this configuration is indeed quite near of what you are expecting. So in the FT, you may find the correct answer for the wrong reasons. And uh, finally, uh, when we do a calculation, depending on your functional, you are committing an error. And even if you have the correct spin state, for example, the errors that are committed that, uh, for example, if you recall, and that is why I, I put it here, the functional, okay, the part that we do not do well is the exchange and correlation. And the exchange part, that we extract part of the artery fork and the rest is the FT, is the main reason of the separation between the triplets and the singlet. So if your exchange part is not correct, and your mixing uh, and your spin state is not correct, maybe you will end to a correct numerical value, but let's say with an error composition, co com compensation. So this is what we call a spin contamination. To see if, if you have spin contamination here, you have the S square. S square is the total spin value. And if you have zero, so you have a pure singlet. If you don't have zero, that means you have some triplet states in your singlet state. Okay? And if you have a, a large uh, sep uh, charge separation, it can occur, for example. So, when we say, uh, be careful, GFT is a mono-configurational approach, it has a huge implication when we do spectroscopy. I know it's fast, okay, so um, I, I stop the, uh, the, the video, and I will put this video, especially in in YouTube so you can check it again when when needed.